everybody, Stephen Key here, and I'm in my office. Well, no, I'm not in my office. I'm actually up at Flathead Lake, Montana, spending the summer with friends and family having a blast. But I'm going to do a video for you on how you can do this full time. Do what full time? How you can become an inventor full time and have a blast. How you can make those dollars that you wanna make and have a good time creating ideas and bringing them to market. So stay tuned. Okay, let's talk about this. I've been coming up with my own ideas, licensing those ideas to companies and collecting royalties basically my whole career. And I'm gonna, during this video, I'm gonna show you some of the steps that I took that maybe you can follow that can help you. And the first one I wanna talk about is don't get in a hurry. It's gonna take a little longer than you think it's gonna take. I'm just sorry, to get good at anything, it takes time. If you're in this business for the short term, if you're in this business to think you're gonna be a millionaire, if you're in this business and you think that this is gonna be easy, do something else because it's gonna take longer than you think and it's gonna take a lot of work and you're going to have to love it. I said it, you're gonna to have to be passionate about it, stay with it, Ugh. and hopefully it works out. But with, with these tips I'm gonna provide during this video, I'm gonna help you, in fact, I'm gonna give you a roadmap of what you can do to be successful at this. So, like I said, don't rush. You're gonna to have to educate yourself, surround yourself with like-minded individuals, build your roadmap, find your roadmap, and keep with it. You're going to have to be persistent, have a lot of dedication, but you can do it. But here's the trick, you better love it. It's absolutely beautiful up in Montana today. So I'm really having a blast. I'm outside getting away from my desk. Yes, I am working up here in Montana. All right, here we go. This is what I need for you to do. You need to come up with a lot of ideas, not just one idea, not just two ideas. You need to come up with a lot of ideas because it's just going to take a lot of ideas because some of those ideas well, you might hit a, a single, maybe a double, but in order to hit the home run, it's gonna take a lot of ideas. So you need to be an idea factory. You have to find out how you can come up with a lot of ideas. I'm gonna talk in other videos of how you can harness your creativity, master your creativity, so you're not waiting for inspiration to hit. You can call upon it, you can come up with ideas any day of the, day of the week. If you don't learn how to do this, Oh, it's going to take forever and you're going to be frustrated. So come up with a lot of ideas. You need to be idea factory. That's the only way this is going to work. All right, testing those ideas. I told you earlier, you're going to need to come up with a lot of ideas and you're going to need to find a way to test those ideas, that's right. And the best way to test those ideas is with a one-page sell sheet. It's a one-page advertisement that you can float around maybe to a buyer, maybe to companies looking for ideas and see if there's interest. What a great little tool. It's called a one-page sell sheet. They're easy to do, although everybody makes mistakes when they do those sell sheets. And if you wanna know how to do those sell sheets correctly, we have a lot of other videos on InventRight TV. So you need to test the ideas. Don't spend a lot of money filing patents, building prototypes. You wanna learn how to sell the benefit first to see if there's interest. Then go ahead and maybe then build that prototype. Then maybe then file that provisional patent, patent application. Those are things that you can do, but if you spend all that money at the very beginning and you don't even know if anybody cares, you're gonna waste a lot of time, energy, money, and you will not be successful at this. So learn how to test those ideas with a simple sell sheet. Okay, here's one tip that was that someone mentioned to me early early on when I first started out. Why don't you go ahead and work for a company for a while? Work for a company in the industry that you're passionate about. The way to do that too is study the industry, find one particular company you really love and put together a creative portfolio. That's right, kind of, 
kind of work on projects that are similar to theirs, but show them how creative you are and reach out to them and say, look, I'm an idea guy. Do you need anybody that can come up with ideas for you? I'm available for freelance. That's what I did and I got to know the industry, I got to know the people and it taught me a lot about how to work internally with these companies. And guess what? It paid the bills. Also, I was able to show different ideas that were mine, right, for licensing to the same companies I was doing the freelance for. So it gives you a double hit. So working for somebody else is not a bad idea. It's a great way, the fastest way to learn about an industry. Someone told me a long time ago, Steve, it's two things to be successful at coming up with ideas, to be a professional inventor, two things have to happen. You have to know the right people and really have the right information. So it's who you know and what you know. Huh. And that comes down to building relationships. There I said it. Never burn a bridge. Never uh, get mad at anybody. Don't do that. What you want to do is work with a lot of people, build relationships with those people you want to have uh, potential opportunities with. So when you start to reach out to these companies to see if they want your ideas, if they say no, don't get upset about it. It's no big deal. Keep coming up with other ideas. Keep on submitting other ideas to them. Keep those relationships open. I think the number one most important thing to be successful in life and in inventing is building solid relationships and so people can count on you. There you go. So people can count on you and be loyal to them, work hard for them so they keep on coming back to you when they need more ideas. I want to quit my day job. I'm not happy. Well, don't. Don't quit your day job yet. That's not a smart thing to do because you don't have to. When you're licensing ideas to companies, it's not a full-time job yet. It could become one. But at the very beginning, you can do it anytime, day or night, because you can use those great tools we're talking about, such as the sell sheet. And you can use LinkedIn to reach out to companies. So you can do it anytime, day or night. You can even do it during your break. You can do it before work, lunchtime. It doesn't matter. It's easy to do. So don't quit your day job yet. You'll know when to quit. All right, you'll know when to quit, but don't do it too early. There's no need to put all that pressure on you and your family. Do not let fear guide you, right? It's okay to be careful, but just realize, you know, companies are not out there to steal your ideas. I know you think they are, but they're really not. They really want to work with you. Those companies that embrace open innovation really need ideas and they'll, they'll work with you. So don't be fearful. What that means is don't rush out and file a patent just because you, you heard it on Shark Tank or some friend said, hey, you better get a patent on that. Don't do that. Educate yourself and do not let fear guide you through this process. It's going to take a little bit of time, like I said earlier, so don't rush. But don't let fear be careful. We'll talk about all the tools that you need. I, I do this through all the videos. So don't be guided by fear. Be careful. How many people like Shark Tank? Stop watching it. I hate to say that. I like it. It's okay. And it's been, I think it's been going on for over a decade. It's really fun to see people up there pitching and, but is it real? Is anything on Shark Tank real? I don't think it is. I think you can learn about pitching. You can learn a little, a few things about business. But if you think Shark Tank is going to save you or discover you, I think you're wrong. And I wouldn't put all my eggs in any one basket ever. If you want to be on Shark Tank, fantastic, but do a lot of other things. The way I would leverage Shark Tank, not thinking that a shark is going to somehow help me be successful. If I, if I have a product, I'm already selling it, or I've already licensed it or whatever I've done and I need publicity, that's when I would go on Shark Tank, but not beforehand. That's my advice. I'm giving it here. Oh boy, I'm going to probably take a lot of heat for this one, but it's a TV show. Nothing more, nothing less. 
I like it, but it's the TV show. Okay, one of the best tips I can give you, love this business. If you don't love this business, I would do something else because it's not going to be that easy. It's going to take some time. You're going to get frustrated like we all do. And you're going to get a lot of rejections. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But the bottom line is you better love it because if you love it, you're going to stay with it. And if you love it, you're not going to quit. And if you love it, you will be successful. But if you don't, do something else. It's too much work not to love it. People ask me all the time, Steve, do you ever get no's? Get no's? I get no's all the time. I get rejected all the time. I could wallpaper my house with rejection letters. But does that stop me? No, it actually motivates me. I'm a no collector and you need to be a no collector too. But don't let those no's bother you. Learn from the no's and keep going. Because if you keep on getting all these no's, sooner or later, there's a yes in there. So don't stop. giving you tons of information here but what I also want you to do is build a, a platform on social media like LinkedIn and build a community of that that people know who you are so when your product does launch you have a, a fan base it's simple like other people's stuff be involved in the community post don't poke anybody in the eye build friends there you go, build friends, show some of your other creative ideas, share with the community, be part of the community. So when your turn comes, and it will, and your product's gonna come out, use that army of people that you have supported to support you. It's some of the best protection you can possibly have. There, build your army of raging fans, and your potential licensee will love that you've done that, because you're the story, you're the story that can be told and the media is gonna love you because the company that you license the idea to, that's, that's just another product, there's no story there. But for you, you are the story. So start early, be nice, be the, build a, like I said, a fan base of people that will support you. So you need to support them because you need to help your licensee sell more product and that's the best way on social media. Okay, this is the last one, stay current. That's right, understand what other people are doing, understand the industry that you're in. If you can go to a trade show, if they ever get back, go to trade shows, read the trade magazines, stay current, go to movies, read the paper magazines, whatever you have to do to be current as you can, read books. All this stuff is gonna help you be a better inventor because all this other stuff that's out there, you need to, to, to keep it and, and learn from it and so you can pull from it. It's very important, so stay current. All right, <sighs> am I tired? I just did all these videos in a row. Stephen Key, Stephen Key here. I'm up in, up in Montana having a blast with my family and friends. I'll probably do a few more videos up here. So anyway, have a blast. Learn how to be a professional inventor. Don't let fear guide you, educate yourself, make friends with a lot of people out there and be determined, be persistent and follow something you'd love to do and you'll be successful. Yeah.